Uh, okay, so this is about large scale data analysis, uh, geometric problems, problems. Right, so this is an interdisciplinary area and uh, to begin, uh, so, so why do we want to do topological data analysis is, uh, so the point is that a lot of applications of computing involve high volume and high dimensional data. So for example, you have um, a lot of databases which come from the internet. So your data is in terms of millions or even billions. Um, so one simple example would be uh, for high dimensionality, if you have an image, let's say, and you, and you have a database and you want to find the closest matching image uh, from your given image in, from the database. Okay, so every pixel of the image, it can take, so let's say the, the image is true color. So every pixel can take 16 million values, which means that your image becomes a 48 million sized array. And this means that it becomes a point in a 48 million dimensional vector space, right? And now your image database, therefore, is a set of points in this very high dimensional uh, vector space. And your closest matching image problem becomes a Euclidean nearest neighbor search problem. So this was just a very oversimplified, naive example. It, this is not how it is done in practice, but it captures the problem of image search as a, as a problem in a high dimensional geometric space. Um, so our goals uh, for this uh, project uh, will be to understand and exploit the geometry and topology of high dimensional and high volume data. Uh, so we want to design algorithms uh, using this, uh, the geometry and topology, uh, which can be, which are better suited to handle such uh, large volume and high dimensional data. And another uh, perspective is we want to understand what typical data sets look like. Okay, so here's a brief primer on computational geometry. So in computational geometry, the typical way of modeling is that you think of data as points in some geometric space, and uh, we want to answer queries about the data. So for example, we are given a point and we want to answer uh, like how many data points are close to this point or within, or we want to tell the number of data points which are uh, in a given interval of values or mm, uh, we want to find the nearest data point for um, a given uh, point in the space and so on. So, so such uh, queries becomes, uh, can be translated to, uh, to ranges, which means you have a family of geometric objects, uh, which could be balls or rectangles or half planes, half spaces, and so on. Um, and your queries become problems like range reporting, where you want to report the, all the points which lie in a given range or a range emptiness where you want to say if a range is empty or not, uh, a nearest neighbor search and so on. And we want to come up with algorithms and data structure which support some notion of efficient responses to these queries. Um, and what happens is that the geometry of, uh, once you have this problem in a geometric setting, it becomes often much simpler than the combinatorial version of the problem. Okay, and so this was the classical kind of uh, computational geometry, which has been there since, uh, I guess, the 60s. Uh, and uh, more recent development is topological data analysis. So here we want to study the shape or the topological features of the data. So we have a lot of points uh, because of the high volume which means our points become a point cloud in some high dimensional space. And now we want to understand the topological features of this point cloud, uh, which will allow us to extract features uh, for example, uh, for use in say AI or machine learning, or even compare data sets um, and uh, so on. Okay, so this was initiated by uh, 
several people independently coming from uh, algebraic topology or coming from computer science or computational geometry. Uh, so Herbert Edelsbrunner, Gunnar Clarkson, and several others during the 90s. And it has a lot of uh, mathematical theory in there. So you, you have uh, algebraic topology, measure theory, optimal transport, functional analysis, uh, maybe geometrical probability, um, and also a lot of practical applications. So you have these huge data sets which uh, come from various sources. So th this could be internet-based data or biomedical data, geological data, uh, AI, uh, astronomical data from uh, you know analyzing uh, different galaxies and so on. Uh, and there are uh, companies which have evolved uh, to, to do this kind of data analysis, uh, maybe in combination with statistical data analysis, and uh, they give uh, results. OK, so, so this process has seen uh, several uh, theoretical as well as uh, commercial applications. OK, so here's a brief uh, uh, primer on the flow of TDA. So you have the point cloud. And from the point cloud, you build a filtration of simplicial complexes, uh, which means a nested sequence of simplicial complexes. And uh, from these uh, nested sequence, you can uh, generate what is known as a persistence diagram or barcode. And from this, you can extract topological information, such as the Betty numbers. Uh, so just to take one example, um, so you have some kind of point cloud, let's say, in two-dimensional space, and uh, you, you sort of blur your vision. So you think of the points as balls now uh, of uh, increasing radius. And what happens is as uh, the radius increases, more and more balls overlap, and uh, you, dev you get these holes. So you have one large hole, and you have a couple of uh, small holes here. And as the radius grows still further, uh, your, only the large holes uh, will remain. So the idea is that the small holes represent noise in some sense. And the large hole is the, uh, is the information which you want to extract. So, so by large here, I mean the hole that persists as you increase the radius. So more formally, you can construct the sequence of nested simplicial complexes and compute the kth homology groups for each simplicial complex. And then you can compute the persistence diagram from the homology groups. And OK, so this, is, this works fine in, in low dimensional space. So here you have, uh, from the example that we took, we have uh, this, these points corresponding to the birth and death times of the small holes. And this one is for the, the large hole. So as you can see, the, the, the points that are plotted close to the diagonal means that these holes died soon after they were born. And the one which is far from the diagonal, this represents uh, the hole which uh, lasted for a long time. Okay. So this is the information part. OK, so there are several uh, directions in, in the research uh, around, uh, around topological data analysis and computational geometry. Uh, so these algorithms, they have a very bad dependence on the ambient dimension. So it's even worse than exponential. So sometimes, in fact, exponential is the best that you can get. Um, but there is uh, still hope. So there is one hypothesis which is very useful, which is very common in uh, AI and machine learning, which is called the manifold hypothesis, which says that the data is often believed to lie on lower dimensional submanifolds of a high dimensional uh, ambient space. So, um, so this is fine, but we don't know what the submanifold is, right? So one idea is, can we reduce the dimensionality of our data somehow to capture the, the intrinsic dimensionality, which is the you know, dimension of the submanifold somehow. And there is a very uh, 
well-known lemma, which is extremely useful for this purpose, which says that if you randomly project your data points onto a, a smaller dimensional subspace, so you have this high dimensional space, and you are projecting your data points onto a smaller dimensional random subspace, then uh, the pairwise distances are preserved up to a factor of one plus minus epsilon. So you need appropriately smaller dimensional subspace. And, uh, but this is not sufficient to preserve the persistent homology. Uh, but there were results more recent which showed that you can also preserve the persistence, uh, persistent homology. And this is true even if you don't have a finite number of points, but you only know that your points lie in a set of bounded Gaussian measure. Um, so there were more results which show that you can also do this if uh, you are using what are called as K distances instead of uh, usual Euclidean distance. Um, so here, uh, so this is a slightly different definition of distance to a point set. And uh, you can still uh, preserve the persistent uh, homology of your point set if you're using k distances. So there are several questions uh, around this uh, further, which, uh, for example, which are still unanswered. So for example, if you know that the point uh, set lies on a lower dimensional manifold, so this is exactly the manifold hypothesis, uh, can we still have better uh, bounds than the usual Johnson, Johnson Lindenstrass bound for preserving uh, the persistent homology? Uh, or if we know that the point set has bounded doubling dimension or uh, you know, for other non-Euclidean metrics, um, what kind of bounds uh, we can use, uh, we can obtain using uh, random projections. Okay, so then there are some other questions like, can we reduce dimensionality to, uh, to get some constant dimension um, under maybe stronger conditions? Uh, and still for further questions, uh, combining with uh, metric embeddings or uh, principal component analysis. Then there are a few other directions like um, systems with, uh, you can have systems with bounded VC dimensions. So, so this is a, look, a notion of- uh, Please move to, to towards the end because- Okay. <laughs> the time is up, unfortunately, sorry. Sure, sorry. Uh, okay, so there are several other uh, directions like uh, for systems of uh, bounded VC dimension. Uh, here again, there are several questions that one can ask. Um, so I don't have uh, time, I guess. Um, then, but yes, so geometric systems typically have uh, bounded VC dimension and uh, there are several interesting questions that can be asked there. And the third aspect is uh, about mitigating the curse of dimensionality on uh, geometric algorithms. And uh, finally, uh, the one where I mentioned uh, about uh, typical data sets. So here is where we want to understand uh, random simplicial complexes. So there are several different models. Uh, the first one was introduced by Lineal and Michelin. And uh, there are several other models, either combinatorial or geometric, and we want to study topological properties of uh, these models. Uh, and there are a few more um, higher order topological questions that are still open. So for the students, um, I would prefer to have, uh, I, for, for CS majors, I would prefer a strong background in algorithms uh, and uh, and probability and discrete mathematics, and also a good understanding of uh, especially linear algebra and basic algebra. And they should be willing to pick up some algebraic topology, uh, geometric functional analysis, uh, and so on. And for the math majors, it's the other way around. So strong background in algebraic and differential topology and uh, geometric functional analysis and some familiarity with combinatorics and uh, algorithms. 
Um, okay, so yeah, so this is. Uh, so thank, thank you. you. Much.